And we're back now. We, uh, Senator Graham is sticking around. Senator Levin had to leave for a previous engagement, but we are joined uh, by <laughs> Senator Amy Klobuchar, Democrat from Minnesota, Republican Senator uh, Jeff Sessions um, from Alabama. I want to move the, the discussion now to next year. And what do you, Senator Klobuchar, if you had to make a prediction, it seems to me that the, the partisan divide is going to be wider. A lot of moderates got beat. So it, I think Republicans are going to be more conservative in the next Congress and Democrats uh, more liberal. Do you think there's any way the two sides are going to be able to get together? Well, I think it's a fair assessment in terms of that there are a number of conservative Republicans that have been added, particularly in the House. But let me say this. I have some disagreement with my friend Lindsay here about uh, the last month or so. We were able to get some significant things done. Uh, a significant uh, tax uh, bill, uh, both Lindsay and I supported that. That was done on a bipartisan basis. Uh, we were able to get Don't Ask, Don't Tell repealed uh, with the support of eight Republicans yesterday. Uh, that was a major step. Uh, we are working on the START Treaty. Uh, there's a lot of work still to be done on that, but I predict we will eventually get that START Treaty passed. Uh, as you go through what we've done, these things have been done on a bipartisan basis. So I think there is hope for the future. And when you look at this last election, what the American people really want, they want a laser focus on the economy and jobs. They want to see some reduction in spending and bringing this deficit down. And they want to see us working together. So any party or any person who decides to spend the next two years just tearing things apart and trying not to move America forward, I think they do it at their own peril. Senator Sessions, you're going to be the ranking Republican now on the Budget Committee. Uh, what do you think the next Congress is going to be about? And do you uh, join Senator Klobuchar in thinking there are some things you can actually work together on? There is. Um, for example, Senator Klobuchar worked uh, and supported the Sessions McCaskill bill that would put in statutory language <coughs> the budget numbers, the caps, limits on spending, that, and we would require a two-thirds vote to break the budget. So that was a good step procedurally, but fundamentally this election meant something very historic. Huge house change. Uh, people were elected on a promise to change the direction that we were on. People see where we're heading. We're heading to Greece, we're heading to Ireland, we're heading to California. That's the future our children and grandchildren see. Something just happened here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think it's done. <laughs> that is where um, I see the difficulty. I think the House is going to submit a very lean, tight, tough budget, and the Senate's going to have a real difficult time accommodating uh, the challenges that we face. I just have to say. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, uh, we, we, both sides agree that we're facing this uh, fiscal abyss here, and yet uh, you did have this bipartisan tax bill passed that is going to just add to the deficit. So how does that, how do you justify that or how does that work? You no, know, Bob, one thing that did happen that I didn't mention was this bipartisan debt commission and a number of us were talking about this. You have on that commission people as diverse as Senator Dick Durbin and uh, Senator Coburn uh, agreeing that we have to move forward to do something about our debt. We're not going to all agree at this table right now, but we, ha we have to do. But I will say, uh, I think that's got to be in the mix looking at, say, even if you set it at people making over a million dollars, if you bring their taxes to the Clinton levels when we were amazingly prosperous. Uh, you save in 10 years nearly $400 billion on the deficit. You add that in with some of the things that Senator Session just spoke about with some spending uh, limits and uh, caps. Uh, you keep Social Security solvent. I don't agree with everything in that report, but there are some very good ideas about tax reform and other things. If we could move forward together, and there is some leverage for this, and that would be the debt ceiling vote uh, that we'll be taking in a few months that's going to force people to have to come together. Well, well, Senator Graham, uh, you you did not give the glowing report on the lame duck Congress that some uh, others no, have. Think, so what do you well, think is going to happen uh, there have been, you know, getting the tax cuts extended was a tough deal. It was good for America, but look how hard that was. The, the House is in revolt. People are pissed off in the House at the, the estate tax. That's going to carry over a bit, but big government and big spending is on the run and retreat. And that's the reality. The Tea Party will turn on the Republicans as well as the Democrats, but it's going to be a test of the Tea Party. They come up here in large numbers and bring in new energy. 
I applaud what they did, but they got to help us solve problems. If we just sit here and talk about what, what can be done in theory and not actually do it, the Debt Commission is a document we ought to look at closely. There's a tax reform proposal there that is a flatter tax with very few deductions. If we don't adjust the age, retirement age on Social Security and Medicare, we'll, we're just all talk. People in our income level, we're going to have to give up some of our benefits that have been promised because we just don't have enough money to do it all. So I'm ready, willing, and able to make the hard decisions about age and means testing on Part D. Why the hell should the federal government be buying my prescription drugs? We're so far in debt, we're never going to get out of it unless we look to each other around this table and say, it is time to sacrifice. Now, I'm hopeful that the Debt Commission is a bipartisan document that will give us a way to put together a package to ask for sacrifice. Do you think, uh, Senator Klobuchar, that Democrats will be ready to make those hard decisions on means testing for Social Security, age? Uh, Social Security is the easiest yes. of all our problems to solve. But do you think that the Congress has the political will uh, to do what it takes to do that? I think we have to have that will. And as I pointed out, there are a number of Democrats, including Senator Conrad, 14 of us signed a letter saying, let's move forward with this uh, work that needs to be done on the debt. Uh, at the same time, not everyone agrees with everything in that report. I would say with Social Security, uh, looking at one of the proposals is to take, uh, right now, the uh, income cap where you get taxed is at 106000 uh, you could put a, a, a area where you don't get taxed up to say 250,000, and then put that tax back in. Uh, as uh, Senator Graham mentioned, there was some discussion in the report about reducing uh, benefits for some of the upper income people. Uh, you have the fact that you could. They also looked at people that have really hard labor jobs that maybe you should treat them better and treat them differently in the system. I think it's really worth looking at some of the ideas in that report. And and you know, Democrats uh, have made a lot of tough decisions. If you look at the last two years. Uh, when president came in, he had inherited uh, this debt uh, that had grown and grown and grown over the Bush years. When Bill Clinton left office, the last time that we had a surplus, it was a Democratic president. So you have to look at the fact that Democrats have made some tough decisions in the past. They got us into a balanced budget, and we can make the tough decisions this Bob time. Lindsey was there when the last budget was balanced. He was there with Newt Gingrich, yeah. and there was blood politically on the floor. Uh, people slept in their offices, the government was shut down, Bill Clinton then claims credit for balancing the budget, but people who were there could see that was the Congress that made that happen in many ways. Uh, entitlements are, are throwing off basically surpluses. The, every bit of our debt fundamentally is overspending in the discretionary accounts. Yes, the entitlements are going in the deficit in the future, big time, huge challenges. But we, have, we cannot go to our Social Security recipients, our Medicare recipients, and demand big cuts in what they are going to receive so Congress can continue to spend its discretionary money. And we've got to set an example. We've got to start in the Senate. We've got to reduce our budget. The President needs to reduce his, and the President's going to have to help us. We can't just, uh, he runs the executive branch. He should be able to tell us what can be reduced without substantially damaging our economy. And we, we Greece is having troubles, but they're going to be better for this. For uh, New Jersey is having protests and objections, but they're going to be better for the difficult choices they're making. And we're not going to sink into the abyss if we reduce spending in America. Let me just ask you, uh, uh, Charles Krauthammer uh, called uh, uh, President Obama this week the new comeback kid, and he said Republicans are underestimating him. Uh, do you think that's right? I mean, let's just talk some politics here. Yeah. Is, is uh, <laughs> President Obama stronger now or weaker than now that he passed he has, his tax bill? I'm hopeful that he will propose what I think my colleagues mentioned. We need a growth economy. We need simpler, lower rates as far as possible. Le uh, so we focused on growth. There's some hint that he might offer a pretty bold program uh, in the State of the Union. I hope he does, uh, but uh, he's got to help us. We're on the wrong path. We don't need to go 30 miles an hour 
instead of 60. We need to get on the right path. And he's going to have to make some Do you changes. see him moving more to the center, uh, Senator Klobuchar? You know, I don't care if you call it left, right, center. I think what you've seen is a major focus on private sector jobs. I think that focus has been there. But the truth is, when you ask people uh, when the last year when Democrats would talk about jobs, whether it was fair or not, they thought it meant government jobs. We need to talk about private sector jobs. The fact that he's meeting with the business community is a start. I think it's very positive. Um, the focus on exports is going to be very important as we move forward. Nine 95% of our potential customers outside of our borders. And as I've said on your show before, a competitive agenda for this country. I think that's what will bring people together, whether they're right, left, or center, as we compete in this increasingly global economy, uh, that we put America first, that we believe in America. And that means education reform, and that means uh, like competitive that. reform. I'll give <laughs> Lindsey, uh, Senator Graham, the last word here. Well, I think the president's uh, signing the tax bill and changing his tone instead of whining about it, embracing it if he would embrace a flatter tax entitlement reform but end this with one thought the president is more popular than the congress by a country mile we're at 13 percent in the eyes of the american people we have to ask ourselves how does that happen and who are the 13 percent and what do they like if we don't recognize that about ourselves and get this body in better standing with the american people nothing is possible i'm an optimist i think we can think change things but it's going to take sacrifice and political commitment I haven't seen in a long time. All right. Well, I want to thank all of you on that note and the best of the holiday well, season. Thank all you of very you. much.